Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to the 10 week coding challenge. Um, I actually had some issues uploading this last week so we went ahead and I actually added a little bit to it just to show you kind of the ways that we're going to go with it and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So this week for week two we went ahead and created a network scanner. If you guys are liking this content, if you guys don't like the content let me know in the comments below make sure you like the video dislike the video whatever however you're feeling with it and then also subscribe to the channel because we are doing 10 weeks of this but we're also continuing our regular channel our regular content so this will be a fun one so this one i actually really like because it's such a simple network scanner and it's something that um doesn't require like anything so i think that's really cool for one you can see this is the whole code and i've actually added to this to this code quite a bit um, so I think that's really cool and then the other thing I like about it is it uses ARP it doesn't use um, actual scanning in the sense it's not actually going out and um, pinging every single machine so that's really really nice because it doesn't um, it's not as noisy I'll say that but keep in mind that ARP anytime someone's making some ARP requests out of nowhere is uh, noisy enough but this is a really really cool tool especially especially if you're like me and you get all kinds of devices on your network and then you forget about them and then you want to see which ones are still connected and things like that so let's go ahead and hop into the code so if you guys remember from the first video um arg parse is what helps us make our help menu so we'll go ahead and run this real quick and we'll run customized and we will bring it over here so you can see it and we'll just run attack H for help and we'll say okay and you can see this is our simple help menu right now it only has one functionality and that's the network scanner and like I said in my other video I'm going to at the end of this build these out into bigger tools for you guys but for now I want to stick with the um, with the ones that the purpose that it has so you can see we have show this help message now the only thing we have right now is target and if you use the syntax tac t, to you have to use that to specify your target. Must be insider notation. And you can see if we run this, you can see right here, I have required equals true with that. So if I run this with nothing and I say OK, we come back with network scan error. The following arguments are required. So you have to run it with a target. <clears throat> now, I am going to, once again, you guys know. I'm upfront about it. I am using a guide, and here is the guide how to make a network scanner using Scapy Python. And I'll put that in the link below, along with the fact that um, Scapy has to be installed on your machine first. And I'll put a link to that how to do that too, because um, it's pretty simple, pretty self explanatory, but it's good to know. Now, Let's go ahead and keep diving into it. So there's our help menu. If you remember from arg parse before, we imported it, and here we created our help menu. So that's not in the original guide. I added the help menu, and I added the target. Um, the reason is, in the original guide, they actually have the target set to 192.168.1.1-24, which would be pretty much everybody's home network, okay? And that's fine. That's great. But I wanted to make this tool a little bit more versatile. Yes, you could go in and edit the... Um, where the target was labeled, you could go in and edit it every time. I wanted to make it a little more versatile. Just specify what your IP range is, and boom, you can use it now more broadly. So that's why you see I actually use the arg parser from the previous video because I want to show you guys building skills, not just um, copying and pasting, right? So you can see we did the parser dot add argument, and there's our T for target, and then you can see right here target IP which is our target, is the args.target, so it is the um, syntax tac t. So when we do run the program, we say tac t, and we say specify our target, this is where it's going to actually run it. Now, this is where we get into the scapey stuff. So if you guys don't know scapey, I think I actually have it pulled up. Let me see. Um, I don't think I have it pulled up, but anyway, scapey you can see is right here. It's this is the um, how to install Scapy on Windows, and I'll put this below too. It's a packet manipulation tool for computer networks, so it's way to you. It's a way to use Python and actually customize packets. Okay, so it's very very important that you understand it. Um, and you can see here you have to install P NPcap, which most of you probably already have if you're in cyber because um, 
you probably just have it. And then you have your regular PIP3 install, Scapy, and boom, boom. It's pretty simple, but we're still going to um, walk through it. Or not walk through that, but I'm still going to put it in the link below so you can walk through it. Um, so here we go. So you can see, if you guys don't know what ARP is, first off, ARP is Address Resolution Protocol. It holds all of your IP addresses to your MAC addresses. Why is that important? It's kind of like your DNS for your home network, right? It has You have to know what MAC address is on what IP or else when somebody says, hey, I want to talk to John over there, it has no idea where to go, right? So ARP holds all that for you. And what this tool actually does, it's really cool, is this tool actually broadcasts out and says, hey, I'm trying to reach people. Give me the IP or give me their address, right? So it's, it'll say, hey, I want to reach 192.168.1.1. Who is that? And then it comes back and they say nobody. Okay, well, now I want to reach 192.168.1.2. Who's that? Nobody. Okay, cool. And it goes through them and it figures out which address resolution protocols are on and which ones aren't, meaning who can I contact, right? And so here we're going to go ahead and use ARP equals and then ARP destination equals target IP. So packet destination equals target IP. What's that mean? That means our target IP right here. So where's our, our, our packet destination? It's the target we're setting. Now you can see we're going to use create the ethernet broadcast packet. So this is the ether ethernet destination equals. And now if you guys have never seen this, this FF, 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 that is the broadcast Mac address. So what that means is Anytime you see that on a network, it's going to broadcast to everything in that network. That is a broadcast MAC address. This is used a lot, actually, so um, you guys should kind of be familiar with it because it is used a lot in the sense of if I'm looking for something on a network or if I'm trying to spam a network or do whatever, um, especially I'm not going to dive into some of the things it can be used for, but um, it's, ve it's very useful to, to know. So if you ever see that, that's what it is. It's the broadcast, meaning it is going to go to everybody. And then you can see we have, um, so we created the ARP and we created the ethernet packet, ARP and ethernet. Well, now we just say packet equals and we say ether ARP, meaning we want the ethernet, then the ARP, and we want them stacked on top of each other. We want that to be one packet. So that is now one. Now you can see the result equals the packet. And we what we're saying is, We've got the packet that's coming in or going out. The timeout is three. So what that is is we want this to time out after so long if it's not working because otherwise the the program will just hang up. It'll just if it's let's say it's stuck on something or it's not receiving a result or not receiving any feedback or whatever. It's just gonna sit there, sit there, sit there, and it'll never never stop. So you want to time it out. You have to. It's the same as when you um, if you do a ping. If you've ever done that, you do a ping and you see that eventually. If it, that target's not there, it'll time out. Um, that's because otherwise it'll stay open forever trying to do that. You don't want that. That's a waste of time. Um, so now you can see the list of clients. So this would be, the clients would be um, what we're getting, the target list, right? Well, you can see it's empty. But we have to create the list so that we can add to it. So now we say for sent received in result. So what's that mean? So for the clients, we're going to say IP. Basically what this is, is we're saying, okay, we're adding to the list, we're adding a list of IPs, and then we're adding a list of max. And you can see the IPs are going to be the received source. Did I say perceived? I meant received if I said perceived. And then the received hardware source. So what it's doing is it's categorizing them. And that's important. You'll see why here in a minute, because when we do print them out, you want to be able to tell the difference. Otherwise, you may just get this into a blob. You know, you may not understand how to get it. So Scapy actually lets us take the received um, packet source and the received hardware source and separate them into two categories for us in the list, which is awesome. Now, this is where we're going to say, and you notice we're saying clients.append. What's that mean? We're taking that client's list right here that we had and we're adding to it. We're appending it. Um, so if you really were, were on a big test or something like that, um, the nice thing you could do is you could actually save this list uh, and you could have this actually stay where every time you run it, it just keeps appending and then you have a long list and you save them. So there's some pretty cool stuff you could do with this. We're going to build this tool out a lot more. This was one of my favorites. We're going to actually build this tool out to where um, 
once you get the the targets, you can now do port scans and stuff like that. So um, that's further on. But for 10 weeks of coding, this is a good project. This doesn't take a week, but if you're a busy man, if you're a busy woman, this you could take this take a week and just knock this out and have fun with it and start using it. And it's really useful. So now we're going to print the clients. So what do we do? We These extras... A lot of you may get confused by some of these extras. You don't have to do some of this stuff. Keep that in mind. This is to make it look nice. So what I mean by that is, and and that's where I'm trying to learn more of that. Um, so that's the whole point of this challenge is to make my tools, instead of me just making tools on the fly and running them and making them work, I want to code them properly to where, let's say I do publish it, you guys could download it and you can use it properly versus before you wouldn't know what, what you're looking at. So you see, we have print available devices in the network. This is just going to say available devices in the network so that you understand what you're looking at. Then it's going to say print IP space, and then you can see they want 18 character, and then Mac. What's that mean? All that's saying is print, say IP, space it out, and then say Mac. What that's going to do, and you may have to play with this if you're doing something else, but all it's going to do is put two um, columns right here that's going to say IP Mac, and then so that way we can list them. And then for clients and clients, it's just going to say, okay, and there's our client list. It's just going to say print them, format it. This is just the formatting. For, formatting? That was a weird way to say it. This is just the formatting. And you can see from here when we said IP equal is the received um, source, now we just have to print the IP. We don't have to actually say print the I, or received source so then when we go ahead and run it we'll go ahead and run it and we'll say and i'll show you guys here tac t and i'll bring this over here so you can see it so we'll see tac t and we'll just specify the source 192.168.1.1 and then we want it to be inside your notation so we just say boom and you can see that's going to say our target is 192.168 one dot one dash twenty four. So we hit OK and let it run and boom. Now obviously you guys aren't going to see my MAC addresses, but you can see these are all the IPs. Now I have DHCP on my local network, so these will change. But currently these are my IPs, and here's the MAC addresses. So now if I'm on your network, I didn't have to do much. I ran this quick little tool, and I have a list of all the targets on that network. So it's a really cool tool. It's a lot of fun. We're going to build this out a ton because I'm going to build out a lot of functionality. Um, this is one of the tools that – one of the goals I was going to have is just take all 10 tools that I'm building for the 10 weeks and combine them into one big tool. But the first one was a password generator. This is a network scanner. They're so different that I don't know that I could combine them Um in a good way to make it make sense. Um, it would be kind of odd, but we'll figure something out. So hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully you guys like this content and hopefully you guys are building these out too, because these are really good tools that you can start doing yourself that now you actually understand the back end process. And instead of going to Nmap every single time that is signatured, meaning that people do know how Nmap works very intuitively and they do start looking for those things. So if you're on a pen test and you're running Nmap every single time, most likely that's gonna get picked up by pretty much everybody. Now, an ARP, an ARP resolution may get picked up, depends on the network. Some networks may be like, okay, that's weird. We don't really use, like nobody's broadcasting art very often but some networks may be using it all the time and it may you may just blend in so keep in mind you need to know different ways to do different things so hopefully this helps guys hopefully you guys like it and if you do hit that like button and hit that sub button thank you guys so much and have a great day